Hey guys, welcome to another day in the life of a shearer with Katie and Darian at Right Choice Shearing. We're actually in the Dallas area today and we've got a packed schedule, so let's hop in the truck and get started. Hey y'all, my name's Katie and this is my wife Darian and together we make the team at Right Choice Shearing. Does that mean I have to shear? Yes, you have to get back to work. I do 50% of the work and she gets 100% of the pay because there's no animal she can't handle and she lets me drag her around nine states shearing various herd sizes. We are shearing a show breeding ram. Just one baby doll. Just three llamas. So 260 sheep for the rancher. Sometimes it seems like more than we signed up for but we're tough enough to keep trucking and help the animals and the people of our community because there's no days off in shearing season. It is 9.25 and we're just getting to our hotel room. A lot of bruises. A lot of bruises and a lot of pain. I'll tell you what, at 27 I feel old after riding that llama for a while. The animals are definitely on to us and things rarely go right. Four times he jumped our fence. We are losing light fast. Thankfully we're extremely food motivated and there's always a Dr. Pepper close by. Are you ready for pizza? Ice pop? Yes, please. Well I see donuts, so I'll be back. It helps us get through the rough stuff so someone else can make it beautiful. So let's get rolling on our satisfying adventure of sheer passion. So today we have nine jobs with a total of 32 animals. It's a pretty easy day considering most of our days have been 80 plus sheep. Our tank is totally topped off for the day, and let's go ahead and reset our miles to see just how far we go. So our first job is two sheep. They're both weathers, both boys, and they're just pets, backyard pets at this place. Um, it should be super easy and they're my favorite breed, or at least one of my favorite breeds, the Harlequin. So I know we're going to see some awesome coloration underneath them. So what's so special about this woolly breed of cows? It's my opinion that they have some of the sweetest patterns to expose under their wool. And out of all the breeds I work with, they're definitely on the calmer side. But the hands down best part is the tight skin and how easy that wool comes, making them difficult to neck and a joy to shear. I haven't even mentioned that they put out a killer fleece and some mouthwatering wool. And this breed of sheep is actually pretty young. They were only created about 35 years ago. Not gonna lie, I did peep their website in case any of you lovely people just wanted to learn about sheep today. But don't worry, I won't block your view of the shearing. I found the origins of this breed to be super interesting. We have your basics like your Tunis, and my favorite, the Border Lester, and a classic like Lincoln, but then Caracol! What in the long-haired, fat tail ancestor sheep is going on here? I understand that we got density from the Romney and some long locks from the Lincoln. But I'm hella disappointed that we didn't get fat tails on these almost perfect sheep. But holy heck can these guys put out some lanolin. All that yellow stuff you see is caked up lanolin, but it's still March so it's a little cold for it to be flowing well. These dudes produce some awesome virgin fleeces which are likely to be the best they ever give. While I finish cleaning up, Darian makes a peace offering to end our first job of the day. With no peanuts for the shearer, we pack up our stuff and we start heading down the road. It's about a 30 minute scoot past downtown to our next place, which is kind of a special case. So our next job is just two male sheep. Um, they are dorpers, which is traditionally a hair sheep, but these guys for some reason just won't shed. I am very anti-shearing hair sheep because they are not designed to be sheared. Over thousands of years of domestication, we were able to take commercial sheep and breed them for shearable traits, and those hair sheep just don't have it, and it's very hard on the shearer, very hard on our body. We actually are accepting no more hair sheep jobs 
but we're not going to kick these two guys out because um, they're not a breeding herd. We're not creating more of them. And if they won't shed, they won't shed. The boys also talked Darian into trimming their rock hard nails with her puny little hands. <sighs> it's just a quick 30 minute stop before we're back in the truck headed out of this Dallas suburb and on to Covington, Texas. Even though we've been making really good time, that's all about to end because I'm not quite prepared. We have been getting back to the hotel pretty late recently, so that means that I've had no daylight time to sharpen blades outside of jobs, and we're now at the critical limit, which means I'm gonna pull the grinder out while Darian goes ahead and gets set up. Everybody may have a different preference, but I choose to sharpen my own blades on the grinder that I drag around with us. I really just can't beat the convenience and reliability of sharpening my own blades. It's easy once you know what to look for, so why don't I show you what we're looking at? Now try to ignore the black I painted on there and look at the grooves and the dull spots on the teeth. That's how you know it's used. A couple even strokes across my 40 grit paper restores the blade quickly. Now she sports a shine that says she's sharp. I just need to do about nine more. It's not all of my camelid blades, but it's enough to get done what I need to. I have to flip the grinder around to get to the side with 80 grit for my cutters, but that's not the only thing I have to change. The magnetic pendulum also has to be switched around to match the holes on the cutter. Those guys get the same groovy little dull spots that need to be resurfaced. But then we're back in business, baby. I go ahead and sharpen as many cutters as I have combs, but leave it at that because I gotta get this put away so I can go help Darian with those two alpacas. Hmm. It's super nice that everything fits so well together, especially since we're always on the go. Both of my discs go together with the plate in the middle to protect the paper from any damage in between my sharpening sessions. All of this even gets a seat in the cab because none of it's water resistant. While I wrap up, let me catch you up on these alpacas. This is Tina and that's Mina. In the last year, she lost her ear and a couple chunks of meat to a dog attack, but today she's up first for shearing. Once our girl was properly restrained, our first order of business were these gnarly toenails, but we had to move fast because she had already started to vocalize. It's been my personal experience that shearing is more stressful for animals who have recently undergone severe trauma like a dog attack. So even though efficiency is always our number one goal to reduce the amount of time any animal is exposed to the stress of shearing, with traumatized animals, it's even more important for us to move quickly. There becomes this need for a perfect tempo where this animal can tell that I'm strong and confident and moving quickly, but also that I'm gentle and not there to hurt them. That they can relax and that this experience is maybe not an enjoyable one, but one that wasn't so bad. Once she's back in her stall, she's looking and feeling a heck of a lot better. But now it's her buddy's turn, and she is going to need a little dental work. I am pleasantly surprised at how well Tina does for her haircut, especially since Mina just spent the last six minutes screaming alpaca murder. She does brilliantly, y'all. Not a single fuss the whole time. And look at how gorgeous that blanket is. But homegirl's teeth have grown past the pad, and if they get too long, she won't be able to eat right. But with a quick zip of the grinder, we can fix that. Whoa, whoa, wait. You're gonna grind off her teeth while she's awake? Yeah, dude. Just like that. You see, alpaca teeth are different than human teeth. They don't have nerve endings in the tips of them. They also grow all of the animal's life grinding against that top pad. But Tina's are out of alignment, so they weren't grinding down. It's no surprise that our new friends are in a rush to get to where they're going, but they only wander far enough away to make sure that we don't leave anything behind when we're packing up. In my 13 years of shearing, I've worked with a lot of stressed animals, and it can go bad really quickly. The faster they're done, the faster they're up and back to normal. And I'm happy to see that she's completely back to normal. Our next stop's only 30 minutes down the road, but 
add in some Texas country highways, a little bit of pasture drama, and a bathroom break, and we get there about 12.45. Our next job is just three llamas. We've got Bruno here who is super curious and his two lady friends, Cleo and Nina. And we've been doing them for several years and they're pretty good. So uh, hopefully they behave for us today too. <laughs> yeah, but the thing about animals is you never really know how they're going to act. The catching process starts off super smooth and we are quickly able to isolate the white one who we believe is the eldest, the best behave, and is going to give the best example for the other llamas that we're here to help and not hurt. But then trouble starts when Bruno decides he wants to come back again and again and again. This type of obsession can be a warning sign of aggressive behavior and the fact that he doesn't want to leave her alone is a little bit concerning. Even when I get super physical with him, he's still not getting the picture, so it's time to get more serious and break out the rope halter. Now, Bruno's not necessarily acting like a bad llama, I just can't take the chance of misreading his intentions. I've watched male llamas behave this way in the past, and the minute the shears turn on, violently attack the one being restrained. But that's not gonna happen today, so despite his Broadway rodeo, we get him secured to the post. Bruno waits there in self-reflection while we take care of Cleo. When working with llamas standing, I believe the most important part is choosing the correct order to work them in. These animals feed off of our energy, so our goal is always to choose the oldest, possibly most experienced, and the calmest llama to set a good example and keep the vibe low in the pen. Cleo is a stellar example, all the way up to her front legs, where she starts to give me a little bit of trouble. Now. It's not uncommon for llamas not to like their legs touched. As I've mentioned before, it's kind of their favorite form of street fighting, and I wonder if the male's been doing that to her. Dee and I get what we can on her legs and leave the rest for the tabloids to talk about. She's been a good llama and that's all we could ask for. Darian fluffs her butt and we let her go in exchange for her buddy Nina, who actually ended up doing pretty well. I mean, look at that well-sculpted booty. But unfortunately, that's all the footage I have of her. Well, I forgot to hit record when I started this girl, but uh, she did pretty good overall. Uh, she really calmed down. She was a little nervous on her legs, but once we had two people on either side, she really calmed down a lot. Um, she's never been antsy around her legs before, so I have a feeling that's from the male Bruno. And that probably means that he is not going to enjoy this shearing. A lot of times when llamas fight, they go for each other's legs. And I think he's been picking on the ladies, which probably means he's going to end up being a big baby too. So since I anticipate Bruno is going to be a problem child, we want to make sure that we can get his head tied as tight to a pole as possible. I don't want him to be able to sling his head around and hurt himself or us. So uh, he is tied to this post as opposed to somewhere else, just so I can make sure that he's super tight and against that. Less movement that he has, the less likely he is to get hurt. I was apprehensive to get started, but after a few strokes, he visibly relaxes. And by the time Darian joins in, it's business as normal. Bruno is outstanding for my back leg, the barrel, the neck, Darian's back leg. Heck, he even lets me do behind his halter and floof his tail, no problem. So, I am totally shocked at how well Bruno did. He was perfect. I mean, he even got a beautifully manicured tail. Kudos to Bruno. He deserves some extra grain tonight, but right now it's time to check his hooves, give him his shots, and let him go. I understand that just because he behaved for shearing does not mean he's perfect 100% of the time, but it does leave you to wonder why else could these females be acting so antsy. So sometimes when llamas are bred, which is certainly possible if these two ladies are exposed to uh, Bruno all the time, if they're bred they can be a little more anxious about their legs too, so that could be what we saw today. Um, Bruno, the way that he behaved was absolutely awesome. I was definitely concerned about it seeing as uh, he was acting a little aggressive with the females, but in the end he turned out to be the best one. Our fellowship seems thrilled to be headed out the gate with their little hobbit friends, but before we load up that truck we get a tidbit more information that really clears up the dynamics of these llamas. 
that. No, she's she's the dominant one anyway. Oh, Venus? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's uh, she rules the roost, so Bruno does not go close to Nina. I'm pretty sure she is red. Yeah, she comes, she comes within 15 feet of her ear until back he turns. Turns out the Lady Llamas were in charge the whole time. Sorry, Bruno. We get all that cleared up in 45 minutes, then it's 30 minutes down the road to Joshua, Texas, where Lily, Billy, and Daffodil, the three baby dolls, are waiting on us. I know we're running a little bit behind on time, but each of these guys are just so beautiful, so in order to save time, I'm just going to show you all of them at once. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a couple minutes of my classical baby doll compilation. wasn't totally worth the watch, watching them walk away is. Even if they take out some of my stuff along the way. We ended up with three happy, healthy, slick bucket hogs. We're only here for about 30 minutes, but there's no time to waste because we're 15 minutes late to job number six, so we gotta hit the road. It's a 45 minute drive to Azel, Texas, where I'm feeling a little hopeful because it seems like I might have a few tricks up my sleeves. Okay, so we are running about 20 minutes late right now, but I only have five sheep to do at this job and they're tunis, so hopefully they're easy shearing. On top of that, I allotted 45 minutes and I think I can do it in 30, so wish me luck. Oof, that's a lot of faith because I still have to change blades before I can even get started. But once we get going, we're rolling. Darian's bringing them over and trimming their hooves while I'm shearing the sheep. It doesn't take long for us to fall into a rhythm. When it comes to shearing, speed is essential right behind being gentle and kind. Handling an animal that's not typically handled is always going to be stressful on them, so it's our job as the shearer to reduce the amount of time that they're exposed to that stress. Yes, sometimes we do worry about the quality of the fleece, but our number one goal is keeping these guys happy and healthy through the summer, not what they look like. Well, I honestly can't believe it. We did that in 28 minutes, so we might have caught off. All five girls are done and happy and back to grain. It's 45 minutes from the driveway in Azel to the driveway in Boyd. And at the end of this one are 10 mixed breed that are in need of a cut and a trim. This next job is pretty interesting. Um, they have hair sheep, but the hair sheep have been bred with wool sheep somewhere down the line a ways and so now they have a bunch of hair sheep that don't shed. All of that windy mess to say I'm only doing this because I have to. Hair sheep are not genetically designed to be shorn and are super hard on a shearer's body but I will admit they can be a little bit of fun if they're fast. Dude, you didn't even have to shear the whole sheep and you missed a spot. Okay. My question is, was that a world record time? And I think it was. Maybe, but I don't think they care about quarter sheep. Just like the last place, I'm shearing the sheep while Darian's trimming the toes. The problem is, by the time she gets them to the board, I'm basically already done. 
And dude, these toenails are no joke. Look at how tough these things are. They need quite a bit of time-consuming work to trim them all up. And that means that I'm totally leaving Darian in the dust. I got one hook done. Am I going too fast for you? Yes. <laughs> I don't like being the slow one. Oh. Maybe you should trim hooks faster. Ah. Eventually, all things come to an end, as did my hair sheep shearing, but they even gave me a little parting gift. That, my friends, is baked on lanolin and dirt. To say the least, this stuff is a nuisance and an obstruction, but to be more accurate, it really causes the machine to overheat. This can happen with other breeds, but is very consistent with hair sheep. It's just another mark against them. So I feel kind of bad because I feel like you definitely worked harder than me on that one. I mean, I'm not going to argue with you. How are those hooves? Hard, very tough, very tough to trim. But did you see me shear that fast sheep? No, nope, I was too busy trimming hooves. That's okay, maybe next time. It took Darian an hour to trim all of those hooves, but she has an hour long rest before we get to the second to last job of the day. This time we drive through some more Dallas suburbs to get to Roanoke, Texas. Last job of the day here is just one baby doll. Uh, her name is Charlotte, and uh, this is her first haircut ever, so nobody knows how it's gonna go. Hopefully, really well though. And it did. She braved the belly like a pro, took the top knot like the best of them, barely blinked for the eye cleaning, downright dominated the long blows, truly outdid herself on the other side, and always kept it classy for the cameras. Charlotte, what do you think? Are you guys down with her? Can I let her go? You can. Awesome. In my book, that's an A plus sheepy. But Sheeran's hard work, so Charlotte's off for a drink of water and to show off her new look, while I go check out her virgin fleece that we just took off. So overall, Charlotte did awesome for her first time, and she gave us a lot of fleece here. Um, it all came off in one beautiful piece because she didn't give me any trouble at all. And it is absolutely gorgeous. Best fleece that she'll have her whole life because she is a lamb. And this is her first cut. You can see how much crimp it has in it. And that is just really cool to see, especially in a baby doll. We only spend 30 minutes at Charlotte's before finally heading to our last job of the day. It's only 30 minutes to Denton where a sunset and four final baby dolls are waiting for us. Okay, we have finally made it to the last job. It's only four baby doll, and then it's back to the hotel from there. We are 15 minutes late, and I don't anticipate making up any time. But oh well, the last place to go is home. So we get to work, finishing our dances with the last of our partners. Yeah, it's the same pattern as the first job, but our rhythm and beat matches the quietness of the barn now. The world is getting ready to tuck in, and our sweet little butter balls are ready to melt into their shavings. After just 30 minutes with these guys, we load up for the last time tonight. We're done. You know what time it is? 8.04. That is almost exactly 12 hours from when we had left the hotel. It's a long day. You ready to get back? Very ready. Uh, we have to stop at the grocery store first. Does that mean you're cooking dinner? Uh, okay. <sighs> Um, we're definitely going to need some quick groceries. It's the toll road back to Plano for our central market close to our hotel. We need to pick up some breakfast stuff and maybe a little extra. I'll for sure need a couple ways to eat apples and some sad herbs to make our dinner better. In fact, we're doing white girl spaghetti because I'm lazy and it's fast. But I'll grab some olives just in case that doesn't work out. I am positive that that is the most bougie supermarket I've ever been in, and I'm feeling really poor right now, but we got a big haul. You better celebrate while you can, because next you'll be getting gas. Ugh, but these gas prices mean I don't have to speed it up very fast to get a dramatic effect at the pump. Now that I've got it topped off for the night, let's see what our $76 gets us. 370 miles. 307 miles. Everything's feeling the effects by the time we make it back to the hotel, but it does feel good to be home. All right, guys, this is where we're going to leave you for the night. 
It is 9.25 and we're just getting to our hotel room. Um, it's been a long day, but a very rewarding one. Now we got to cook dinner and get ready to do it all again tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Join my wonderful fans. If you didn't, then don't. Oh, and if you want more daily content, check out our TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube short speed. So, we'll see you later.